next module is on carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives. Uh, the main reaction we'll be talking about in this module is nucleophilic acyl substitution, and you'll see there's a lot of different compounds that undergo the same reaction with the same reaction mechanism. So let's get started. Uh, carboxylic acids are pretty interesting. They themselves are often have stringent odors and are responsible for some of the smells that we find displeasing. Interestingly enough, all we have to do is make a derivative of carboxylic acids uh, at an alcohol group and convert it to an ester, and we get pleasant smelling things that are responsible for a lot of the smells we're used to uh, in a good sense. We see carboxylic acids all over the place. Uh, in Canada, we put acetic acid in, as a dilute solution on our french fries. Uh, butanoic acid, probably less prevalent than it used to be, but that's the smell that you smell with rancid butter. Hexanoic acid, dirty socks, lactic acid, that's what you taste when your milk goes bad. Uh, they're also very helpful. We find them in a lot of pharmaceuticals. Aspirin's probably one of the most widely used uh, pharmaceuticals in the world. Uh, it's an analgesic pain reliever. Aminosalicylic acid, here's the carboxylic acid functionality, uh, used in the treatment of tuberculosis. Isotrentinoin, used in the treatment of acne. We name carboxylic acids just by substituting oic acid for the E in the root name. So butane becomes butanoic acid. That means there's four carbons. Uh, by default, the carboxylic acid functionality is a terminal group. Here we see 5-hydroxy-4,4-dimethylpentanoic acid. So the parent chain is five carbon atoms long. And at the we start with the carboxylic acid as number one. So in this case, at the four position, we have two methyl groups. And in the five position, we have a hydroxyl group. When the carboxylic acid is attached to something else, we can just call it a carboxylic acid, in this instance, cyclohexane carboxylic acid. What we will find is that common names for a lot of carboxylic acids are very prevalent. So here we see from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten carbon atoms. Uh, the IUPAC name, some of the common names, uh, the typical source, and a lot of times it was the source that led to the common names, uh, and some of the physical properties for carboxylic acids. Dicarboxylic acids, we just replace the, we use the dioic acid. Here's an example of pentane dio pentane dioic acid. Now notice that there are only two positions uh, where the acid could be in this case, and that is in the one position and the five position. Uh, again, we see common names, ethane, ethane dioic acid, oxalic acid, propane dioic acid, malonic acid. Uh, this is a particularly interesting compound. We'll use it uh, quite often in later chapters when we talk about the chemistry of uh, the alpha carbon. Succinic acid is uh, IUPAC named butane dioic acid. Glutaric acid, one, two, three, four, five. So that is the pentane dioic acid. Methods of preparation, we've seen this already. We can oxidize aldehydes to carboxylic acids by various means. Uh, we can do the oxidative cleavage of uh, alkynes to form carboxylic acids. We can uh, oxidize primary alcohols using various oxidizing agents. This is sodium dichromate. Uh, we saw that we can do this with chromic acid, and with potassium permanganate as well. We'll address this a little bit later, but under 
the right conditions, we can oxidize uh, even alkanes so long as they're next to an aromatic ring, we can oxidatively cleave the carbon, carbon bonds and make benzoic acid. In this section, we'll see how we can form carboxylic acids from nitriles. Um, a nitrile is actually a carboxylic acid derivative. We'll talk about that later in this chapter. We can heat them in the presence of acid or base, actually, and get carboxylic acids. But that presents us a way of converting other functional groups into carboxylic acids. Uh, here we see a reaction where we can just displace the bromide with an SN2 reaction to extend this by one carbon atom. We get our nitrile, and then we do the hydrolysis, and we get a carboxylic acid where we've extended this by one carbon unit. Uh, we can also uh, form a carbon-carbon bond by uh, a reaction which we've learned already, and that is the hydrocyanation of a ketone or aldehyde. Once we get that, we can uh, hydrolyze the nitrile group into a carboxylic acid, and this way we get what's known as an alpha-hydroxy carboxylic acid. We can react Grignard reagents with carbon dioxide. This is a fairly common method of forming carboxylic acids. You see it a lot in undergraduate laboratories. Uh, I don't think we do this experiment anymore, but we have in the past. Uh, we just take a reaction of our highly nucleophilic alkyl magnesium chloride or bromide uh, in the presence of carbon dioxide. You can think of it as an anion acting as our nucleophile and attacking the central carbon of carbon dioxide. And then we just need to work that up, typically in the presence of a stronger uh, mineral acid. And we get our carboxylic acid. The acid group is really quite polar. And due to the presence of strongly polarized carbonyl group, and the hydroxyl group bonded to the carbonyl carbon. So small carboxylic acids are completely miscible with water. This begins to decrease as the length of the chain uh, increases. But carboxylic acids are both hydrogen bond acceptors and hydrogen bond donors. Uh, solutions of carboxylic acids in organic compounds, we can get dimers form. And in fact, these dimers are so strong that they can exist in the gas phase even. So acetic acid can have a gas phase component, which is the dimer. So it has rather high boiling points. They're called carboxylic acids. So as we might guess, they're decent acids, but they're weak acids. They will react with a strong base such as sodium hydroxide to uh, completely deprotonate. Uh, and form the carboxylate salt in this instance. When we have the negative anion, the conjugate base that of the carboxylic acid, we give it the OATE ending, and we talk about it as being in a carboxylate. So benzoic acid makes sodium benzoate. In water, the carboxylic acids only dissociate slightly because they're weak acids. So this equilibrium uh, lies to the left and favors the protonated form uh, if we just dissolve this in water. pKa for most carboxylic acids is somewhere between about 4 and 5. Uh, acetic acid 4.76. Benzoic acid is slightly more acidic because of the electron withdrawing nature of the phenyl group. And uh, propane, propanoic acid is slightly less acidic due to the uh, electron donating properties of the methyl group relative to the hydrogen it replaced. They're considerably more acidic than something like an alcohol. Both of these have this OH functionality and alcohol can act as uh, an acid under certain conditions. But in water, this reaction really hardly goes at all, whereas in a carboxylic acid, it goes to quite a significant extent. The pKa for carboxylic acids, we said somewhere between 4 and 5. 
uh, for acetic acid, 4.76. For ethanol, it's around 16, so very much less acidic. Why might that be? Well, let's take a look at the conjugate base. So if we have a carboxylic acid, the, car the conjugate base uh, is a carboxylate, and we can delocalize that negative charge through resonance. So uh, the true structure shares that negative charge between the two oxygen atoms. Uh, we can draw our curly arrows and move the charge over to the other oxygen atom. So we get this uh, delocalized charge, which is a, a stabilizing factor. Whenever we can delocalize charge, we can stabilize things. When we have the conjugate base of an alcohol, it's a localized charge. So it's very much less stable than the carboxylate. So uh, if you remember the henderson hasselbalch equation, we can figure out the concentrations of conjugate base and conjugate acid so long as we know the pKa and the pH. If you uh, plug your numbers into this reaction at a pH of 7.3 and used a fairly generic carboxylic acid like acetic acid, uh, you find out that at physiologic, physiological pH, uh, most of the carboxylic acid is deprotonated and exists as the carboxylate anion at those higher pH numbers that we find in, in biological systems. What happens to the acidity when we substitute uh, the protons that are on the alpha carbon? So here we have acetic acid, and if we replace one of these hydrogen atoms with a chlorine atom, which is considerably more electronegative than hydrogen, the electron withdrawing nature of the chloride actually pulls electron density away and would stabilize the corresponding carboxylate anion. Uh, so that means that this proton is much more easily removed uh, and the car the pKa goes down. So this is this is almost two orders of magnitude more acidic than simple acetic acid. Uh, the next time we put replace one of the hydrogens with another chloride, it goes down again, uh, down to 1.48 in this instance. You'll find slight differences. Other textbooks report numbers that are near here, but slightly different. When we have tried chloroacetic acid, it's very close to being a strong acid, which, which would have a pKa around zero. So this has a pKa at 0.7. So this is a very much stronger carboxylic acid than this one, four orders of magnitude stronger. As we start moving the chloride further and further away, so 2-chlorobutanoic acid, pKa about 2.5, the parent compound's 4.86, so two orders of magnitude when it's on the alpha carbon. When we move it to the beta carbon, that's beta to this carbonyl group, the pKa uh, is now considerably higher, so this is a weaker acid than this. And as we get further and further away, now you can see 4-chlorobutanoic acid, pKa of 4.5. It's getting much closer uh, to the pKa of butanoic acid itself, which I believe is 4.86. Here we see that we don't affect it too much by alkyl substitution a little bit, but whenever we put electron withdrawing groups uh, next to the carboxylic acid functionality, so in this case we have an acetyl group bonded directly to uh, the carbonyl carbon and the pKa goes down considerably relative to acetic acid. Another highly electron withdrawing group is the nitro group and Notice now the pKa goes down even further. Cyano group, also an electron withdrawing group, and it goes down considerably. The phenyl group is a mildly electron withdrawing group, and the pKa goes down relative to the parent acetic acid uh, by almost half a pKa unit.
actually slightly over half of pKa unit. So with these now, you may want to test yourself and let's let's just go through this. Pick the stronger acid between these pairs. We have acetic acid and fluoroacetic acid. So we've put this very electron withdrawing group in the alpha carbon. This is much more acidic than this compound. So this is the stronger acid. If we were to look at fluoro versus chloroacetic acid, fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine. So it's a better electron withdrawing group. This would be the stronger acid. Uh, what about when we take that fluorine on the alpha carbon versus the beta carbon? It's further away from the carboxylic functionality, so it'll have less effect over here. So this is going to be a stronger acid. Here we're looking at uh, benzoic acid versus benzoic acid with a trimethyl ammonium substituent on it. So this has a positive charge. So positive charge is going to attract all of the electron density away from the phenyl ring, which in turn moves it away from here. So this is the stronger acid. Finally, CF3, the same type of thing. CF3 is a very electron withdrawing group. When we put it on the ring, it pulls the electron density away. And this is the strongest carboxylic acid. One of the nice things about uh, higher molecular weight carboxylic acids is we can change their properties um, simply by going from the protonated form to the unprotonated form. In the case of benzoic acid, uh, in its protonated form, it's very water insoluble. But if we add a little bit of base so that we can pull that proton off, we can pull that thing into solution because sodium benzoate is quite water soluble. We can use this as a method of cleaning up uh, benzoic acid by uh, dissolving it in organic solvent uh, and then washing that organic solvent with water. Then we can pull that into base by adding base, doing a final wash with basic water that will pull all of the benzoic acid into the aqueous phase, and then we get rid of all the organic solvent, uh, and as we add some mineral acid, and we could precipitate out our sodium benzoate by protonating it in the aqueous, and it will crash out a solution. Common reaction for carboxylic acids is decarboxylation. One of the decarboxylation reactions that we will see quite a bit of is this beta keto acid. So this is something to remember. When we have a carbonyl group in the beta position, this reaction goes quite readily. We don't have to heat to very high. It will immediately decarboxylate. That's because it can form this six-membered cyclic transition state and we can push our arrows and we get rid of uh, carbon dioxide, that we that would be the carbon dioxide we get rid of, and we form the enol, uh, which we will learn later, just uh, tautomerizes or isomerizes into the ketone form. Uh, this reaction is quite common when we get to the chapters on the chemistry of the alpha carbon and uh, we use the properties of these beta keto esters and then we can convert that to the acid and finally decarboxylate. So this is going to be an important reaction to remember uh, later in the course.